Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm Chief Technology Officer at Woodside in charge of innovation, uh, and I was going to spend a few minutes to give you an insight into how we approach developing that culture as it's applied to the water column. But so, first of all, who's Woodside? You know, we're Australia's largest independent oil and gas company, uh, and, you know, we deliver mostly gas into the domestic market, power, helping powering Perth, but also into Asia. Uh, we ship it into Asia as LNG, liquefied natural gas. It's minus 161 degrees, and we ship it in tanks, uh, and takes nine days to get to Japan and back. Uh, and one cargo is worth about $30 million and powers about 27 million homes for a day. So it's the context of the product that we're, we work with. Um, so let's start with where we begin after we've discovered gas. And it's at the sea floor. People don't really quite understand that when an oil and gas company goes to develop a resource, they just think it's in the ground and it kind of, you see the facilities uh, and then you're burning the product in your car or uh, in your gas hot plate or in, uh, to generate power. But it actually starts on the sea floor most of the time. And so for us, we've got about one third of our infrastructure sits on the sea floor in varying water depths from 80 metres to 2,000 metres. And that in infrastructure is, uh, we've got about 1,000 kilometres of pipe and flow lines sitting on that sea floor that brings it from wells all the way through to the surface facilities. Now, our innovation approach is, starts with the problem, problem-based innovation. We're a for-profit company, and so we, our job is not research. We sponsor research, but we need to de deploy research onto problems. So what's the big problem we have in these offshore facilities? They're getting too expensive. And so how do we connect new technology sitting here on the far left to do more and more of the cleanup of the gas on the sea floor. When it's on the sea floor, we don't have to deploy people to offshore facilities. It's a bit hard when it's 100 or 1,000 metres under the, under the water. Um, it tends to be maintenance free. It's designed that way. And the infrastructure costs a lot less. In order for us to be able to push those subsea technologies further and further out into deeper water, we need to change the technology to all electric. Instead of the old hydraulic systems of the 70s and 80s, we're moving to all electric. With all, where does electricity come from? It either comes from onshore or in the future, probably from power boys sitting offshore, powering that sea floor. So when we look at the water column and some of that innovation, it starts there at the seafloor. Let's go talk about what happens in the water column. We're guests as an oil and gas company in the water column. It's a very rich biodiversity that a lot of people have spoken about. Our job is to minimise and protect any impact we have. And so for us, let's talk about a problem. 2000 and, uh, late 2009, we needed to run a seismic survey to explore for how much gas we had discovered. But it was in a reef environment. Uh, the Ames spoke about that at Scott Reef, very protected area, and we used seismic sources. These are air guns, and we were unsure of the damage that might do to fish hearing. I didn't know that was a problem, but scientists did. And so we sought out collaboration with people who better understood and helped define that problem. Six research vessels over six weeks and 60 researchers later, we understood the parameters that we could operate in in order to, to undertake that survey. It was an innovative approach in running seismic to explore for gas, but more importantly, it was a collaborative approach, both with the regulators, with the scientists, and with the oil and gas company that allowed that survey to proceed. That survey vessel that we were waiting was sitting there on standby, waiting for this uh, results to come out. And it's an example, I think, as when we look to define a problem, who are we working with? What are we trying to solve? And defining that up front 
seeking out the collaboration in order to deploy uh, to find that correct solution. So we've been to the seafloor, we've talked about the biodiversity challenges as guests in there, and then the innovative approach sitting on the sea surface. So we as an oil and gas company, we run and operate about 500 vessel operations per year. 300 of them are deploying those valuable cargoes to, uh, throughout Asia to power their cities. But there's also lots of other support vessels that we use. In using all of those vessels, they emit CO2 and particulates. And so there's the problem. How do we go and then innovate around that? And so for us, we look at using LNG as a, as a marine fuel to reduce the amount of CO2 that's burnt, to reduce the particulates that go into the air for a cleaner environment. Again, as we define that, we're not going to be the people that are gonna uh, invent all of those solutions, but we are the right part of the collaboration story to be first movers. So for us, when I look at uh, innovation culture inside Woodside, we use a, a phrase. It's called, think big, prototype small, and scale fast. Think big, make sure you're working on a big problem. Prototype small, test your idea out on that solution first before scaling fast to deploy your solution elsewhere. And so we deployed our first LNG powered support vessel in 2017. We defined this problem many years ago. There's the prototype small, and we look to collaborate with a lot of others to scale this into uh, wider use in the marine environment. So in closing, uh, Woodside approaches innovation from a problem-based uh, problem first. We look to think about what that problem is, prototype a solution, and scale that fast. And it's not just in all of oil and gas, but it's in that water column from the sea surface, through the water column, the biodiversity challenges we all face, and onto the sea floor, where over a third of our infrastructure that helps power both Perth and throughout Asia. Thank you. Thank you.